The Fifth Word Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. Hello, my name is Rob Collins, and I am the pastor of the First Baptist Church of Peoria. When Jesus speaks of his thirst, he does so in a way that acknowledges the pain and discomfort that he's feeling. I think that any of us could understand a person's desire for sustenance while enduring such pain, especially that of torturous crucifixion. But Jesus' confession of his thirst is more than a fulfillment of prophecy or admittance of strife. It is also an ironic twist in the very narrative of his ministry. His first miracle was one of turning water into wine, a sign, as John calls it, that would point both toward the divine nature of Jesus and also provide drink for the entire wedding celebration. Later, in John's Gospel, while speaking with a woman at a well in the country of Samaria, Jesus asks for a drink. And during this interesting conversation, he says, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give them will never thirst. The water I give becomes a spring, the source of eternal life. Again, we see the theme of thirst occurring later in the Gospel of John, as Jesus teaches a large crowd, all gathered in the temple courts, there in the city of Jerusalem, as the sun sets on the last day of this grand festival, Jesus says to all who will listen, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me will have rivers of living water flow from within them. So yet again, we hear Jesus teaching that he is the source of living water, eternal life, and the cure for every thirsty soul. And finally, Shortly before Jesus finds himself on the cross, he is speaking with Peter in the garden. Peter is trying to fend off the mob and a group of soldiers that have come to arrest Jesus. He goes so far as to unsheathe a sword and strike the nearest soldier. But Jesus knows his path. He understands his true goal. And he says to Peter, Am I not to drink the cup given to me by the Lord? It is a bit odd that Jesus now calls out from the cross, saying, I am thirsty. He who is the source of all living water, he who is the one from whom the well never dries, he who not only sustains, but causes water to spring up from within us. He who would drink from a cup so bitter that others would kill to avoid it. He who now calls out for that which he has given to others so freely. When I hear the Lord cry out, I am thirsty, all I can do is give thanks that I am not. Give thanks that God has chosen to pour out God's Spirit in abundance and grace with reckless mercy. Give thanks that the one who is thirsty actually thirsts for all of us so that we thirst no more. I am reminded that Jesus experiences the pains of this life journey right beside us, taking each joy 
and heartbreak and stride with us, not just in support, but in actual, real, flesh and blood connection. I am reminded that our God understands pain and worry and thirst, and that because God understands those things, God also fully knows the power of hope, joy, healing, and life. May each of us, as we rest and reflect on the final words of Christ Jesus our Lord, may we remember the power of thirst and the freedom that is granted by its absence. May we keep our eyes open for those wandering in the desert of this difficult life and help guide them and maybe even ourselves to a place of abundant love and ever-flowing water found in the love and grace of God. May you be blessed and redeemed in the name of our Lord, Jesus the Christ. Amen.